Hello students. Today we're going to talk about another special group uh, called mycorrhizae. Uh, we want you to know that mycorrhizae, they are a group of uh, fung fungi. So they have the characteristics of the fungi. And we're going to talk about their role with association, being symbiotically associated with plants and how they could be beneficial in the soil environment. Mycorrhizae are a highly independent, mutualistic symbiosis, more where host plant receives the mineral nutrients, while the fungus obtains the photosynthetically driven carbon compounds. So it's because of its the symbiosis, we have symbiotic association between the plants, and most of the terrestrial plants have symbiotic association between the roots and the fungi. The fungi here offers the plant its ability to provide the plant with other nutrients that they could reach far through the filaments. It's like an extension to the uh, roots and root hairs. They can reach out, they can extend, and they can bring in more nutrients to the plant. In return, the plant, what does it do to the fungus is that it provides the fungi with the organic carbon that they need, most of the photosynthetic material. Uh, also, is also offered to the fungus by the plants. So they each depend on each other for growth and each benefit each other. So it's a positive correlation for both the plant and the mycorrhizae. So because of this, you know, uh, symbiosis, many plants did learn to develop this association. So over almost 90% of all terrestrial plant species belong to the genera that can form a, a symbiotic relationship with a mycorrhizae. We're going to talk about how mycorrhizae association we will benefit both plant and the soil environment. So the triad between the soil, the plant, and the fungus, where the mycorrhizae can provide a critical linkage between the two, the soil and the plant. So this is how important those mycorrhizae are in the soil environment. We're going to talk deep about two types of mycorrhizae. First is the arbascular mycorrhizae, and, or they're called the endo, endomycorrhizae. And the other one is the ectomycorrhizae, ectomycorrhizae. We're going to start with the ectomycorrhizae, and we're going to talk about the fungal association. Usually those uh, belong to the genera of basidiomycetes, ascomycetes, zygomycetes, or zygomycetes. Those fungal genera can form mycorrhizal association with other plants. Usually those plants like gymnosperms, hardwood, uh, and other types of plants. What ectomycorrhizae does is that you could note that this tree is having an association with a mycorrhizae because if you look at the morphology of the root in the host plant there will be a modification in the host plant root it can be modified it can it can have a dendritic form so it can be recognized visually and so our grandparents used to tell us that when you transplant, you, you, you relocate a plant, you relocate it with the soil around it, and that's beneficial, that's healthy. Uh, because if you transport the plant into another location, a new location, it is important to have the specific mycorrhizal association between the plant root and the specific fungus. If it's totally new environment without the root from previous location, it will be hard for that tree to establish itself in the new environment. And therefore, they would need that fungal association, which is usually specific. So several plant species uh, could do association with either basidiomycetes, ascomycetes, or zygomycetes. And you can tell that this is an ectomycorrhizal association when you look at the root uh, uh, of those uh, plants, you could see that they have been modified visually.
This is what you could see with the ectomycorrhizae. These are some of the fruiting bodies for some of the fungus. But here, this is the, uh, the root in the plant. Like this is the tip of the Pinus nigra. This is colonized by the ectomycorrhizal hyphae. And you can see here the uh, fungal uh, hyphae. What does it does? It, what does the association do to the plant is that it provides the plant with the nutrients. So if you look at the experiment here without mycorrhizae and this experiment with mycorrhizae, you could see, you could note the height of the plant that has been grown, and the same time the same species without mycorrhizae and with mycorrhizae, and you can see that the one with mycorrhizae has the ability to grow even more because it can acquire the nutrients from the surrounding environment even better. Well, the ectomycorrhizae, they're called ecto because those fungal hyphae, they can form a compact mantle or sheath around the root, and the root surface. Sometimes they can penetrate the cortex, the root cortical cells, and they can, they can make intracellular hyphae, or they're called the hearting net. So these um, hyphae, you can see them from the epidermis and up, or you can see them surrounding the cortex here. This is the hyphae of the ectomycorrhizae here around the cells. And these are the hyphae on the uh, outer of the root surface. So that's where we could see the ectomycorrhizae. That's the ecto, is, it stays outside the plant cell. It surrounds the root. Uh, hair, it surrounds the uh, cortex cell, but it doesn't go through. As for the arbascular mycorrhizae, or sometimes they're referred to as the endomycorrhizae, uh, usually those fungi belong to the zygomycetes. They can occur with vast majority of plant species that they can do arbascular mycorrhizal association. The problem with studying endomycorrhizae is that they're very hard to capture on culture because they require the growth, they grow within the roots, uh, root cell, the uh, plant cell. They don't have, there's no substantial change on the host root morphology, other, you know, opposite to the endomic, ectomycorrhizae. And the uh, mostly uh, pronounced structure that they form, they can form a, an arbuscule or they can form a dendritic structure as well. The arbuscule is used for the nutrient transfer. The fungus could form that arbuscule within, inside the plant cell. It's a tree-like structure. They're called an arbuscule. This arbuscule can survive for about four to ten days, as then it starts to dissolve then the uh, dendritic structure, the arbuscule itself, it starts to dissolve, giving the plant cell a better, uh, 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 dissolved nutrients. They break down into other nutrients that the cell could obtain from the fungus. Okay, and that's also another plus for the plant, is that it directly brings nutrients to the cell. This is what you see on a, a microscope here. This is the plant. This is the borders of the plant. These are the borders. Okay. And what you see here is the dendritic structure. It, it forms a tree structure here, over here. It extends with a hyphae. And this hyphae stays from the outside. And it penetrates. It penetrates the uh, root uh, cell. And it's for, it forms these arbuscules, okay? And and this only lasts for four to ten days before it starts dissolving. Other structures can be formed with endomycorrhizae is the vesicles. The vesicles is also internal to the root cells. They're temporary storage organs. They have thin cell wall or plasma membrane. They could be filled with lipids. Okay, so what you see here, these are the vesicle structures that they can use to store fat or store 
uh, lipids, the mycorrhizae could storage organs. So the endomycorrhizae, they can clearly form structures like the vesicles or the arbuscules. What are the benefits to plant? Why does plant has to do mycorrhizal association and give most of its uh, uh, photosynthetic products to the fungus? First, the plant acquire more nutrients. It enhances the uptake of nutrients, especially phosphorus and nitrogen and other metals that are around in the soil. So the benefit of having the fung fungi, the mycorrhizae, either the ecto or the endomycorrhizae, those fungi can acquire uh, nutrients and bring it to the tree uh, or the plant really quickly. And because the uh, root around the root is surrounded by the hyphae of the ectomycorrhizae somehow it acts as a physical barrier it acts as a physical barrier to other pathogens to enter so it's a disease resistance and enhances the disease resistance in the plant and therefore it enhances the competition for space and nutrients it also improves the water re relation between the soil and the uh, plant. Benefits to the fungus, of course, we know fungi, they're not photosynthetic. They require uh, organic carbon for feed, and that's how they get it from the plant. 40 to 60% of photosynthates goes to the fungi. So that's where two species benefit from each other. But the benefits to soil is even more evident it's more significant they promote other growth promoting soil organisms they usually form fungal links between roots and neighboring plants so they it says that it's a, probably a linkage between plants they increase the carbon sequestration within the soil and this is important even to combat climate change and the extra radial hyphae it improves the soil aggregation and therefore improves the soil structure it's ability to retain moisture and organic matter even better so there's a, a benefit to the three parts the fungus the plant and the soil last we're going to talk about soil management soil management like applying fertilizers of phosphorus decreases dependence uh, of plant to do the mycorrhizal association so if I'm a plant, if I have plenty of the nutrients, I would not give away 40 to 60 percent of my photosynthetic products because I already have the nutrients in, in, in surplus. I don't have to look for them. And so I don't need the ectomycorrhizae anymore or the endomycorrhizae. Other management like tillage, it breaks down the arbuscular mycorrhizae. It breaks down those fungal hyphae. Also, fallow could decrease the arbuscular mycorrhizae. And sometimes if we grow, if we change plants and we grow a non-host plant, this could also reduce the number of propagules of fungi in the soil. Okay? And that's how soil management practices is important for uh, fungal association between the you know the symbiotic associated between the fungi and the plant